Hello everyone, Brian Fisher of Fisher Fast here. Thanks for tuning in on this beautiful, crisp fall day here in Pennsylvania. What you're looking at here in front of you is a 2011 Mercedes-Benz CL63 AMG. This is quite different from what you're used to seeing on the channel here with the normal SL55 type of builds. And I kind of wanted to reach out and try a couple new and different platforms just due to the increase in price on the SLs and where everything's at with parts and the vehicles in general were just still, um, you know, going for a lot more than what they used to. So I'm hoping that that comes back down here shortly, maybe over winter or beginning of the year where I can start getting back into some of the SL 55s and the builds on those cars. But I was able to pick this one up and I've always had an itch for the CL body style in general. And I had a choice between the 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 or this newer bi-turbo 5.5 liter V8. And the reason I went for the bi-turbo is because I've had already a handful of the 6.2 liter uh, NA V8 AMGs in the CLS 63 and 1C 63 body style before. So I'm already used to how those perform, so I was always intrigued by the, the bi-turbo Mercedes motors, see how they perform, see what kind of power we can get out of them. So as I mentioned, this is in the 2011, yeah, it has just over 45,000 original miles on the car, no accident history. And in the camera, it probably just looks like a straight black in color, but it's actually called Magnetite, I believe is how you pronounce that. It's a 183 paint coat. And this paint has a little bit of blue, like dark blue, steel color, and some gray and silver mixed into it as well. And in the sunlight, it really pops with a lot of metallic flake, uh, which you just have to take my word for it. Is you can see the sun's uh, beyond the driveway there, unfortunately. But in this in this lighting here, it really does just kind of look like a straight black, and it's extremely you know, shiny and mirror-like, as you can see all the reflections on. It's a cool color. This car does have a lot of nice factory options on it which I'll talk about here in a moment and the reason I wanted to make this video is I'm kind of on the fence if I want to leave this car stock the way that it sits right now and just kind of clean it up and do a little bit of maintenance on it and keep it that way or you know modify it a little bit put a little bit of style into it not that it really needs that much as you can see this is quite a a stunning car just from the factory the way it is especially over the, the rear wheel arch there you really get a wide body effect you can see how much that rear arch sticks out it's pretty cool looking but like i said from the factory has a ton of power already a ton of style but and there's always that but this motor has the, the potential for so much more power for not a ton of work relatively speaking just depending on how far down you know, the rabbit hole you want to go with a build. And I'll also talk about that a little more in a second. But the car in general, like I said, has some nice options on it. The base price on this CL63 was $150,000 when it was brand new. And it has about $21,000, $22,000 worth of options added to that base price. And probably the biggest or most substantial option on here would have to be the P030 AMG performance package. And that does increase the power by about 30 horsepower and 75 pound feet of torque on top of the normal uh, power figures for this vehicle. It also does raise the top speed to 186 miles per hour. And with that kind of power, it's very easy to get close to those speeds without even thinking about it. So it's nice to have in a closed, closed course environment, obviously. Uh, it does have the driver assistance package as well. So it has all the active blind spot uh, warnings, lane keep assist. This Tronic driver assistance package has a split view entertainment system in the front, the premium package. It does have the night view cameras and night view assist with the rear view camera as well. It has the carbon fiber interior trim throughout. 
has the special AMG steering wheel, which was an additional option or order. And it has the 20 inch forged wheels, AMG obviously as well, which actually is a pretty nice looking wheel for a you know factory spec wheel. It's not too bad looking. So I like those as well, but if I was keeping it, I would definitely change these out for maybe even a 21 inch because those wheel wells are so big that you could put a 21 inch wheel on there and it wouldn't look out of place. Uh, but something with some real nice multi uh, thin spoke design would look really killer on this car. And I actually have the printout here with all the options and price. I'll just throw it up on the screen here real quick. And since we're out here, I'll walk around the car and then talk about maybe, you know, the future of this, what we want to do with it, and kind of get your guys' opinion on what you think should be done with this car here. Tell you what, this car does have a ton of presence on the road. It has a nice big wide front end. People really get the hell out of your way when they see you coming down the road. It does have the factory LED light strips here and daytime running lights down here as well. In my opinion, if I were to do some modifications to this car, the headlights is definitely a place where I'd spend a little bit of time. I think that blacking out the inside of these lights while leaving the shrouds uh, chrome, maybe a little bit of gunmetal in there as well, would really make this front end appear to be much uh, younger in age, as well as give it some of that aggressive touch that I love um, You know, about the darker colors. So this car does have a, a different braking design you know, than we used to seeing. I think this was the first year that they did this. It may have started with the S-Class. But I believe it has a dual sliding uh, caliper instead of just one, uh, you know, aluminum caliper. So this system does work extremely well, breaks extremely fast, and there are a lot of benefits to this design. But the one problem is it just doesn't look as polished or finished, uh, you know, as a normal uh, one-piece uh, caliper design you're used to seeing on these high-performance cars. So I would also do something with, you know, powder coating these or redoing the AMG logo as well. I think it would really help to uh, clean this up. Take a look on the inside here. So this is one place where they definitely spent a lot of time and money. I mean, the interior on this car is quite wild if you've never been in one before. Just the design materials and you know, choices and you know, everything in general about this interior is an is a awesome place to be. So this is that special order AMG steering wheel, which does have the... Alcantara on the sides. Um, this wheel could be redone. I would probably redo this top portion and bottom portion in smooth leather and then do the sides in a perforated style leather. Or you could do carbon on the top and the bottom as well, but that's also something I would do as the Alcantara, as it gets old and age, wears down and gets smooth and it's just not you know, too nice to look at anymore. You can see the carbon fiber carries all down through the middle and there's a ton of it on this interior. Even underneath of the armrests here is a nice big piece of carbon as well. It's all factory. 
Taking a look at the seats, these are some of the most comfortable AMG seats that I've ever sat in. They really do hug you. They feel like they're you know, part of your body when you're sitting in them. They're very, very supportive and very comfortable. Almost couch-like in comfort, but then the support from the extremely large side bolsters, as you can see here, really keep you in place. And then another cool option, I believe, was standard on the CL is these dynamic um, seat bolsters here so whenever you're making a turn you can adjust how much these seat bolsters will hug you and they will actually come in and press into your body when you're going around the turn and they really keep you in place you know during aggressive uh, cornering and turning You can see this the design of the dash. It isn't one big flat piece of material. There's a lot of scoops and you know, scallops and uh, different angles and everything in there. It makes it really nice to look at. All the buttons are very high quality. You do have heated and cold seats. And then speaking of that, let's turn on the ignition here. You do have the you know kind of updated style uh, multimedia controller here where you spin the dial to change channels and kind of rotate through your menus. This is not a touch screen, so you do all your controlling through the knob here. If we go into a couple of the settings here. Another cool thing is this does have the multi-contour seats like I was explaining with the side bolstering, active side bolstering. Then you also as well have the dynamic seats. So that's going to give you the massage options. So this is, honestly, this is kind of more of a, a gimmick, but you do feel this, and I do turn it on from time to time just because I think it's you know kind of cool and it's probably a placebo more than anything. That can you know, feel work and it maybe relaxes me a little more. But you can you know pick different programs here of how the massage works. And it does go all the way from the bottom up to about the middle of the seat here. And you can feel the bolsters inside inflating and deflating, kind of giving you a, a massage while you're driving. So it's pretty cool to tell people you have that in there. I said in general the the system is very responsive uh, you have a lot of options for you know multimedia you do have a you know an aux hookup in here as well as you could do you could do bluetooth streaming through a, uh, an adapter that's installed in here the sound system is harman kardon it sounds very good there's no problems with sound quality you have the normal alcantara on the roof here as well nice big glass sunroof the thing I like about these doors is they feel extremely heavy because probably they are, but it's such a satisfying feeling to shut these doors similar to a um, an SUV. What the hell is the name? The G-Wagon has a similar door. It feels very heavy, almost like bank vault in uh, your terms of when you're shutting it and how it sounds, how it feels. Uh, it's very satisfying. Something else cool with this door is it actually has little struts built into the door right here so if you're on a hill or an angle and you open up your door normally and you're trying to get out the door will fall back into you you're kind of hitting your leg and you have to push the door out you know to get out of the car so with that high that little hinge does or strut right in here it'll actually hold the door in multiple stages you know i think there's about 10 different positions of where it will stop the door but basically wherever you stop the door at it'll hold the door open so it doesn't fall back onto you which is a really cool feature as well there's a ton of storage space you know hidden all throughout the car you do have interior lighting as well in the evening you might be able to see here you can change the color of these lights there's one here there's a couple under the dash as well I believe it's blue white and orange it was one of the earlier lighting systems before they got into all the crazy you know a couple hundred different colors that they have now and that works really well they get in the back seat you just move the seat up by pulling on this big chrome handle and this actually is metal surprisingly I guess I shouldn't say surprisingly, depending on, you know, for the price of this car, but it's, uh, so all the materials inside are super nice. The back seat is very big. You can actually fit two 
full-size adults back there pretty comfortably and the seats are just as comfortable as they are up front they're you know very contoured back here you have a nice big piece of carbon fiber as well that covers all the cup holders in the back and driving this car is a peaceful experience when you want it to be and then sporty when you want it to be as well it's very quiet inside and other than just the normal sound insulation which they probably tripled up on on this car is the actually does have dual pane glass so you can see if i can focus on that yeah so it's actually two pieces of glass that are sandwiched together to make one piece of glass so you have you know, double the amount of glass on here than you normally would and that uh, you control the temperature inside from letting heat or cold inside or outside into the car as well as sound insulation as well let's take a look under the hood You can see that beautiful five and a half liter twin turbo V8. And this is kind of an ex a very exciting motor actually. As I said the newer AMGs now are down to the four liter uh, twin turbo V8. So you can imagine an additional liter and a half of motor, you get you a very nice exhaust tone, very deep and grumbly. Uh, compared to the newer ones are a little you know, higher pitched and not quite as pleasing. Almost like that truck that went by, if I'm being honest. Not not too nice. But I have high hopes for once you uncork this exhaust, and if you did put something custom on here, this thing would sound insane. And you might even be able to run you know, a set of intake pipes up down through the front of this grill, which would really open up the turbo noise, turbo spoiling noise, which would also be cool. I've never seen done before on this motor. There are a couple intake systems for it. But it places the filters up here just in an open kind of container or box and you get you know probably a good amount of heat i would imagine from those even though they have a box with sides you know cut out on it you're still going to get an inherent heat from the engine rising up from the bottom underneath of it so if you can get those filters out to the front that'd be something that i I'd probably want to try as well so I so said this is a, you know, it has a nice big carbon fiber piece here as well. The emblem is missing. This is just probably glued on from the factory with these pegs. So to get a new emblem is there as well. It's not a problem. Polish everything up. So while we've got the motor opened up here, just talk about some of the, the possibilities and just the, the motor in general. So like I mentioned a couple times, this is a five and a half liter V8 twin turbo. It's 563 horsepower in 664 pound-feet of torque and that's stock and keep in mind this isn't modified yet and that's with the optional PO30 performance package and that performance package takes it up to 14 and a half PSI I believe is where they're getting that extra power at from a couple you know extra pounds of boost all that power is routed to the rear wheels via seven speed dual clutch transmission the transmission does have automatic rev shift um, rev matching on downshifts, which makes it really easy to sound that you know what you're doing. Handling is a kind of magic blend of sport and comfort that's made possible by one of my favorite suspension designs and systems, which would be the ABC uh, suspension system or active body control in its full name. And I'm, of course, very familiar with this style of suspension system being that I've worked on the SLs for the last 10 years with the same uh, hydraulic suspension system. And when this setup is working correctly, there's honestly not much else like it on the road. You can either have it feel as comfortable as a couch absorbing every bump in the road being very comfortable or in the sport mode or sport setting. It really firms up the suspension and there's almost no body roll when you're making uh, big corners, big turns. Which is astounding for something that weighs this much and is, I believe, just a little over 200 inches long. This is a big car. So you really got to feel it when it's working correctly to, to really enjoy it and appreciate it. So, 
I just want to wrap up modifying this car would really transform the way that it drives right now it's really a, a comfortable gt cruising type car you could take on the highway cross country you know not fatigue from driving it and it's perfect for that scenario but on the other side if you did modify you could you know, go kind of from mild to wild just depending like i said how much time and you know money you want to invest into it but even just something simple with an ecu tune you know, just by doing an ecu tune computer chip which can be done in a couple hours you can get you know roughly 100 horsepower and 150 pound feet of torque just from the ecu tune alone which is insane obviously this is a, a big uh, v8 with two turbos on it but you know not for a ton of money you get a lot of power in return and then if you wanted to go a little further than that you could do a turbo upgrade as well and if you do the turbo upgrade it's about 230 250 horsepower and 300 pound feet of torque over stock figures now that obviously gets substantially more expensive but at the same time i mean this thing's going to be a monster with an additional um you know close to 800 horsepower 900 pound feet of torque if you did the turbo upgrade as well I said I mentioned I would do an exhaust on this, possibly try to do something with the intakes. I'd like to change the wheels on it, uh, modify the headlights a little bit, see if there's a newer style grille design, save some carbon fiber bits on the outside as well. But it doesn't need a ton you know, in terms of modifications to really kind of bring it to that next level, and that's really where I'm at. Uh, should I leave this car stock and kind of preserve the way it is, clean it up, do some maintenance, or... You take it to that next extreme, whether it's mild or wild. So let me know your thoughts down in the, the comments below. And if you have any interest in this vehicle as well, either purchasing it the way it is or purchasing it with some upgrades in mind that I could obviously work with you on and customize this car to your liking. Feel free to reach me on Instagram. I'm on there more often than not at FisherFast is my handle. Or you can email me at FisherFast at hotmail.com as well to discuss some options for this beautiful cl63 so the next time you see this car it'll either be super cleaned up and ready to be sold in stock or we'll be starting some modifications on it so i appreciate you guys tuning in like i said it's something a little different i hope you like this uh, maybe i'll start branching out to some of the other uh, AMGs as well if I can't find any good deals on the SLs until they come back down in the realistic pricing. But other than that, I appreciate you watching and you'll be seeing this car again here in the near future. Take care.